interesting story. Um, eating popcorn at the movies could make advertisements less effective. Researchers asked 96 Germans to watch a movie, which kicked off with a variety of advertisements. Or maybe it might be advertisements. Half of the audience was given popcorn, which was constantly f- filled throughout the screening. The others received a small sugar cube. A few weeks later, the subjects were asked to rate a list of different products, some of which had been advertised. The sugar cube eating group rated the products they had seen ads for higher, but those in the popcorn group were not influenced by the ads. The researchers hypothesized that the chewing motion of popcorn might have something to do with this effect. In order for people to remember something, they have to say it to themselves. This could involve speaking the word out loud or reading the product, um, hearing it in your head. Hmm, well, I guess this is, means we're going to see like $10 sugar cubes in theaters soon to replace popcorn. Is that is that the way it's going to go? At least $10. I mean, the way that it, at least as much as they charge for the popcorn, right? Mm-hmm. And at least the, with the sugar cubes, and they can get a little bit more uh, bang for their advertising buck when they go out there to sell it. I think now, I, I don't think that's really the, the main point of the story, though. Now, to me, if what I'm reading here is, you know, if I'm understanding this correctly, this could be an exciting new treatment for schizophrenics when those voices in your head oh yeah mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. get start telling right, you to right. do some crazy things right mm-hmm. popcorn baby popcorn i wonder if that's ever been tried popcorn oh, people try that all the time i had popcorn <laughs> yesterday actually it was tasty I, I could see that's uh that's very possible uh you know i i don't i don't know so much about this i mean uh i'm just hoping that uh no one was chewing on some popcorn during our smitzers ad earlier I oh, mean, I don't, we might want to redo that just to be sure. <laughs> Put down the popcorn, yeah. uh, listeners. It was Smitzer's butt wax, if you don't remember. Um, just just keep that in mind. You might want to Google it. Uh, just Google butt wax. It should be the top link. You could bing it, too. Yeah. Uh, well. Uh, Maybe not. You could probably bing it to it. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Might be kind of weird. No, honestly, I don't think we have anything to worry about. I think uh, you know our our audience is more of the sugar cube sucking crowd. Right, exactly. They're so sweet. Yeah, typically yeah. laced with lysergic acid. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what? Uh, apparently, uh, marmoset monkeys are found to be uh, very polite conversationalists. Now. Monkeys? Why is every story <laughs> we do about monkeys? I, I, I don't I don't know, but. Uh, you know they're they're cute. You know monkeys are very similar to humans. So I now guess are marmoset monkeys? Are they similar to boffins? Boffin monkeys? They, they, it sounds like it. I, I'm not even familiar what a marmoset monkey is. Uh, and you know I wonder what kind of uh, conversation these boffers boffins had with these monkeys to to find out they were so polite. Anyway, the researchers researchers said that marmosets have two features in common with people. Uh, they generally f- they're generally friendly with one another, and they communicate primarily by producing vocal sounds. Apparently, those are the only two common features between these monkeys that we most likely evolved from. You know, it's, it's they've clearly uh, never seen you without your shirt on. <laughs> yeah, there's there's certainly <laughs> more features. <laughs> uh, those features are likely to promote self-monitored give and take uh, that the a good conversation requires, they said. In experiments, the researchers found that marmosets don't call at the same time, but rather they wait for each other about five seconds after another one is finished before responding. In other words, the researchers said, they appear to follow a uh, set of unspoken rules of conversational etiquette. Now, I just have to say, you know, how much... You know, we find these all these great things out about monkeys, you know, and apes and stuff. And how much of that is just because they're the only animals that we're, like, testing? You know, like, if we were testing right. other animals, would we find that they all do this stuff? I mean, I don't know. Well, there's people, you know, we've we've also covered these other stories. Like, yeah, and, and you're right. It is a lot of times monkeys. Like, we had a story a couple weeks back about monkeys whispering. Now we have this. So... Am I assume? Am I assuming because of this whispering and because of this politeness that they're not actually throwing their shit at us? They're they're really sharing. Yeah, you know, shit. you're right. You're right. They might be communicating through feces. Right. So you know, maybe maybe we shouldn't get so upset about it. Well, the only way I look at it, at least in the future, those uh, cyborg monkeys will at least be uh, polite about it when they take over the world. You know, I do apologize, sir, but I'm going to rip your head off now. Well, and you know that's going to be the case because they're being, you know, developed as cyborg monkey butlers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. So right. they're going to have that, you know, they're going to be, you know, pretty polite and helpful. British accent, most likely. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of, I'm starting to get kind of excited about this story. I think uh, for next week's podcast, we're actually going to put a marmoset, two marmoset monkeys 
behind the behind <laughs> the mics and uh, just see how much better they are than we are. And mind you, we step over each other all the time, so <laughs> they might be a little more polite. Well, I mean, la- la- last week you were throwing poop at me. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, not not so much. Uh, it, it wasn't really poop. Uh, it was it was more of a it was kind of diarrhea uh, like, and uh, I wasn't so much throwing it as splashing it on you. Yeah, well, I mean, technically you're right, but I mean, I'd still throw that in the poop category, wouldn't you? Mm, yeah, I guess technically. Okay, glad we got that straightened out. You know, this this last story, I'm not really sure. Uh, you know, the details. But uh, interesting headline, privacy, zuck that. Facebook teens spread selves all over the Internet. No, 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 no. We're not doing this. No, I think I think we need to end it here because that's just that's ridiculous. Well, I, I, I mean, I think, you know, we started, you know, we, we had Latin Curves earlier. I, I was a long time subscriber to Latin Curves and there was actually a teens uh, category on Latin Curves and it was on the Internet and there was some spread going on. You know what that music means, right? Yeah. You just cut me off. Yeah. I'm, For I'm, good reason. For good reason. <laughs> I, I am not a marmoset monkey. And I'm not necessarily going to be as polite as a cyborg monkey butler terminator. That's it. I've got some shit to throw at you, buddy. So this is Vincent Chris, and uh, we'll see you next time. Goodbye. This has been a Don't Tell Me My Business Media production.